Well, hi there, food friends. It's Kevin, and I am back in the Cavalcade Cookbook Library. And we're going to continue on with our series of sort of standard cookbooks. Uh, cookbooks that have influenced generations of home cooks and have taught a lot of people how to do the basics in the kitchen. So far, we've done Better Homes and Gardens, we've done the Betty Crocker Cookbook, we've done The Joy of Cooking. If you haven't seen those episodes and are interested in those cookbooks, uh, just pull up my list of videos and you will see those in previous episodes. This episode is going to focus on the what we call, refer to as the Fanny Farmer cookbook. Uh, but it was not originally called that. It was written uh, and compiled by Fanny Merritt Farmer, but it was the Boston Cooking School cookbook is when, was the title of the book when it was initially published in 1896. So let's talk about Fanny Farmer, Fanny Merritt Farmer. And growing up, perhaps some of you can remember this, uh, here growing up in Michigan in the Midwest in the 60s and 70s, the name Fanny Farmer to me meant candy because there were Fanny Farmer candy stores, candy shops, in many locations, at least in the Detroit area, in some of the malls and in some of the small suburban downtowns, you would find a Fanny Farmer candy shop. I know my mom thought Fanny Farmer candy was top notch and she would often buy it, particularly if she was giving it as a gift to somebody. I don't know if Fanny Farmer candy still exists. Do they? We don't have any Fanny Farmer stores here in Michigan that I've seen in year, year, decades. I haven't seen them. But please let me know in the comments if you remember Fanny Farmer candy and if they still exist somewhere and you can buy Fanny Farmer chocolates. They were fine chocolates uh, and I don't know that they used Fanny Farmer's recipes or if they just licensed the name Fanny Farmer because that name was synonymous with quality and, and good things uh, to eat. But Fanny Merritt Farmer was born in 1857 and she died in 1915. So she only lived to be 57 years old. Uh, although um, in 1915 and at 57 it was con you were considered already sort of elderly. Uh, certainly wouldn't say that now, but um, anyways, she was in Boston, Massachusetts, and she ended up working uh, at the Boston Cooking School. And it was here that she, among others, but she helped primarily women learn to cook. And these would be young women just starting out or women who were planning to go into domestic service and become cooks in homes or other places, institutions and things like that. Let's remember the time too, the late 19th century and early 20th century. There were not a lot of opportunities for women to work outside of the home. And so being a cook or a domestic was one option. And if you were not raised to learn to cook, to know how to cook, how would you figure it out? <clears throat> well, you could go to the Boston Cooking School and learn from the likes of Fanny Farmer. 
1896, the first edition of the Boston Cooking School cookbook was published. And they only published like 3,000 copies because the publisher did not expect this cookbook to really be a huge thing, but it was, and it sold like crazy. And soon they were reprinting and reprinting and reprinting. And here it is, you know, what, 130 years later, and it's still in print. Although, of course, it's been revised many times since its initial 1896 release. So what was special about Fanny Farmer, Fanny Merritt Farmer? Well, one, she was a cooking instructor. She taught people how to cook. So as somebody who's spent much of their life teaching, uh, if a teacher writes a book, essentially it's a textbook, um, that gives it a little added credibility. And since not everybody could attend the Boston Cooking School, if you could get the book and you could read, you could essentially learn how to cook the same way the students did at the Boston Cooking School. So the original Fanny Farmer book did a number of things. One, it really set new standards in how recipes were written. There were not a lot of cookbooks prior to 1896. There were some, but there weren't a ton. And Fanny Farmer really refined the way that recipes are written in a way that the reader and cook can follow, can understand, comprehend, and follow because she wanted every person who followed a recipe to be successful, like all of us teachers do. We want our students to succeed. That is the great reward for teaching. So she wrote recipes in a more refined uh, way than had been done in the past. The other thing Fanny Farmer did is she explained some of the scientific things that take place during the process of cooking and baking. Why things brown, why things uh, rise, uh, the chemical reactions that happen uh, in the oven and on the stovetop, she explained that so that you could see, oh, if I do A and B, I'm going to, C is going to happen. She helped sort of explain that. Again, she was coming to it sort of from a clinical teaching perspective. And she had a lot to say about diet, and I'll get to that in a minute. Um, and then perhaps her most important role in all of this is Fanny Farmer helped to standardize measurements. So important, so important. So I have a cup, my sister has a cup. Her cup is a different size than my cup. They didn't have standard measuring cups uh, in the late uh, 19th century, okay? If it called for two cups of flour, here's my cup, one, two. Well, if my cup is smaller than my sister's cup, when she makes the re same recipe, she's gonna be adding more flour than I am because her cup's bigger. Same with a teaspoon, same with a tablespoon. Fanny Farmer understood that if you standardized the measurements, cook A and cook B, if they were measuring the same way, putting in the same volume of ingredients, the recipe should come out exactly the same for both cooks. This, we take all this for granted now, but this was a big deal. Thank you, Fanny Farmer. 
She helped to standardize measurements. She helped to standardize temperatures. A recipe might say, bake in a moderate oven. Well, what's moderate? Bake in a fast oven or a hot oven. Well, what did fast mean? What did hot mean? Well, Fannie Farmer said a moderate oven's 350 degrees to 375 degrees. A hot oven might be 400, 425, 450. Important, very important, because those are the things that would affect the outcome of whatever it is you were preparing. Monumentally important stuff. Fannie Farmer was a big deal, okay? And the Fannie Farmer cookbook, which when it came out was called the Boston Cooking School Cookbook by Fannie Merritt Farmer, was a big deal. So, let's start. Now, I don't have an 1896 edition. I do not. But here's what I have in the Cavalcade Library. And this is my oldest one. And this is a 1928 edition. And I love, it has, it's signed Mary D. Miller, September 1929, in absolutely beautiful penmanship, fountain pen, of course, because it's 1929, there were no ballpoint pens. And the owner of this book marked her name in it. So the book came out, this is the, the 1928 edition, and she got it in 1929. So it was fairly current when she got it. Um, I have marked here, oh, on the very inside page of these early editions is a photograph, how to measure. Again, Fanny Farmer was a stickler about measurements and measurements being accurate and right. And how do you measure? How do you measure things like flour, water, milk, butter, things like that? Okay. So anyways, uh, this was published by Little Brown and Company, 1928. I have a bookmark here that was a page. <laughs> this was stuck in the book when I found it. And this is a, an old legal pad of recipes, handwritten in pen, stew chili, hamburger soup, corn chowder, clam chowder. Anyways, I want to show this, and I hope you can see it. The recipes are written in shorthand. Raise your hand if you had shorthand in school, okay? Shorthand, completely obsolete today. Nobody teaches shorthand, nobody uses shorthand. I think it's cool and I think we should bring shorthand back. But because we're so digitized, there's no need. And with voice recognition and everything else. Whoever wrote these recipes knew how to write shorthand and knew how to write it well. This is beautiful. Um, and so perhaps she was a secretary. Uh, but I used it to mark the preface to uh, this book, which was written by Fannie Merritt Farmer. So this is carried over from the first edition of the cookbook because she had already passed away when these were. this was published in 1928. Um, but let me just read briefly the preface from Fanny Merritt Farmer to the book. But for life, the universe were nothing, and all that life requires nourishment. With the progress of knowledge and the needs of the human body have not been forgotten. During the last decade, much time has been given by scientists to the study of foods and their dietetic value. And it is a subject which rightfully should demand much consideration from all. I certainly feel that this time is not too far distant when a knowledge of the principles of diet 
will be an essential part of one's education. Then mankind will eat to live, will be able to do better mental and physical work, and disease will be less frequent. At the earnest solicitation of educators, pupils, and friends, I have been urged to prepare this book, and I trust it may be a help to many who need its aid. It is my wish that it may not only be looked upon as a compilation of tried and tested recipes, but that it may awaken an interest through its condensed scientific knowledge, which will lead to deeper thought and broader study of what to eat. How beautiful is that? So we look into then the, the uh, table of contents, uh, which there's a lot of chapters in this book, food, cookery, beverages, bread and be bread and bread making, quick breads, egg soups, um, soup accompaniments, fish, beef, lamb and mutton, veal, sweet bread, pork, poultry and game, fish, vegetables, potatoes, salads, salads, dressing, entrees, hot puddings, pudding sauces, cold desserts, ices, ice creams, and other frozen desserts. Pastry pies, pastry desserts, gingerbread cookies and wafers, cake, cake fillings and frosting, fake, uh, fancy cakes and confections, sandwiches and canapes, fruits, fresh and cooked, jellies, jams, marmalades, the canning of fruits and vegetables by the open kettle method, pickling, the drying of fruits and vegetables, suitable combinations for serving and food values. And then it has a number of illustrations and photographs in the book itself. The recipes themselves are quite straightforward, um, but there is a lot of nutritional information here in this book as well, because part of what Fanny Farmer taught at the Boston Cooking School was things to cook for children, things to cook for what we used to call invalids, uh, people who were sickly and who needed certain kind of nutritional values in their diet. Um, but, you know, here is... Uh, Fillets of halibut, a la Hollanden. Sliced halibut, salt, pork, onion, bay leaf, butter, flour, buttered cracker crumbs. Um, again, they, the recipes are the list of ingredients is up front, and then a paragraph of narrative of text where she takes you through the process. So here is the 1928 edition. The next edition I have uh, was updated again, and this one was 1941. Now, this was published before the United States entered the Second World War, which of course was at the end of 1941. So there's not any, there's not any recipes here as many wartime cookbooks have on rationing um, and how to cook with um, rations. Uh, and the, uh, again, the table of contents is very similar to the one in the 1928 uh, edition here. However, they've added 50 basic recipes for students and beginners. Again, this was the textbook if you were at the Boston Cooking School. And so we use this book to learn. And the 50 basic recipes are things that kind of would be common everyday things that one would make frequently. White bread, dinner rolls, biscuits, muffins, waffles, donuts. 
uh, and then different sauces, a white sauce, a hollandaise, steak, roast beef, broiled chicken, fried chicken, roast chicken, chicken timbales, uh, potato croquettes, mayonnaise, different salads, and um, different very simple, straightforward cakes. Anyways, I really love this one. I, I do really love the 1941 edition. Um, and then this edition here is, I think, the 65. Yes. So when the 1965 edition came out, and some of you may have these. This was a very popular one. And if you do, let me know if you have it. A couple things happen. One, you see what happened from the earlier editions into the 1940s. The book got bigger. But something else very significant changed. It went from the Boston Cooking School cookbook to being called the Fanny Farmer cookbook. These are not the Fannie Farmer cookbooks. These are written by Fannie Farmer, but they're the Boston Cooking School cookbooks. I don't know what year the Boston Cooking School ceased to exist, but at some point it did. And so, and perhaps that precipitated the change. But starting in 1965, this book was simply called the Fannie Farmer Cookbook. And that's frankly, really, what most people even refer to the older editions as the Fannie Farmer Cookbook, even though that wasn't its proper title. But in 1965, it became its proper title. So the book got physically bigger, um, size-wise, and I will say it continued. All these editions, that preface that I read by Fannie Farmer, appears in all these subsequent editions. They carried that over. And there are new chapters in here, menu making, um, sauces, spaghetti, macaroni, pastas, coffee cakes, uh, mousses and parfaits. This is another, this is a great book. If you see this book somewhere, Sometimes it doesn't have the dust jacket on it. It's just um, because these often didn't didn't make it in the long. Sometimes the cover, I've seen it, it's gold. Sometimes it's red like this, and it just says the Fannie Farmer Cookbook. Anyways, if, um, if you find, if you come across this uh, at a thrift store or a book sale or something and you don't have it, this is a good book. This, I, this is a good book to have. So, that's 1965. This one is 1980. Um, so this one includes a introduction by James Beard, uh, who we know as one of the American culinary masters, and he wrote the, the uh, introduction to this. This is a completely revised edition. Um, Size-wise, pretty comparable to the 65 edition. And again, we're calling it just the Fannie Farmer cookbook. And it has tons of illustrations. I don't believe there are any photographs in here. I think they are all in, I think they are all illustrations. But, you know, one thing that the Fannie Farmer cookbook always did as did some of the other cookbooks we've reviewed, is show you how to do basic kitchen techniques, like, okay, cutting up a chicken into its its major parts, things like that. Um, and so there's the Fannie Farmer Cookbook, 1980. Then we have the Marion Cunningham edition of the Fannie Farmer Cookbook, from 1990. So Marion Cunningham was a cookbook author and a uh, food scholar, and she again revised the Fannie Farmer cookbook with more contemporary and up-to-date recipes 
Mm -hmm. and ideas and let me see if we can just look here quickly okay microwave cooking of course um, and then she's broken things down into vegetarian dishes sandwiches pizza and tacos obviously not going to be in an earlier edition outdoor cooking so uh, and then you have this whole upfront area with uh, equipment and basic techniques and how to stock your pantry and things of that nature. So this is the 1990 edition. Then over here in 1998, isn't this nice? It's got a gold leaf around the edge and it has... Um, uh, it has a ribbon. I don't think it's ever been even used. It's still in the, the bottom here. This is the original Fanny Farmer 1896 cookbook, The Boston Cooking School. So while I don't have an original copy, I have this reprint from 1998 where it's literally word for word a reprint of that original Fanny Farmer book and probably about the right the same size so if you ever want to go back in time a little bit and I've said this many times on Cavalcade of Food cooking does allow for traveling time we always thought that was something in science fiction and a concept and literally it is but figuratively, emotionally, we can go back in time. And certainly, from a culinary perspective, we can go back in time. If we wanted to go back to the late 19th century, early 20th century, we could let some of these re recipes take us there, which I just, I just love that, that idea. So, Reprint of the original, 1990, 1980, 1965, 1941, 1928. Then, like so many popular cookbooks, there were paperback editions. I don't know when the first paperback Fanny Farmer cookbook actually was released. I think it was probably sometime in the 1950s, um, but I can't say for certain. Um, perhaps early 60s, but here is a, the 1965, this edition, in paperback form. Um, Bantam Books, it was $1, the price on the spine. So again, not sure what the list price of this one was. Um, sometimes it'll say on the book jacket, I'm not seeing one. But you could, for a dollar, you could get the paperback edition. And then here is a 1972 edition. Oh, the price was now up to a dollar fifty. Uh, Bantam Books. Here's the 19, what I say, 72 Fanny Farmer cookbook. And then the cookbook that was revised, um, this one is 1990 Marion Cunningham. This is a fat one. This was $7.99, but this is the complete book. What's in here? Okay. Anyways, this was the complete book in paperback form. Um, and again, it certainly was less expensive than the hardcover edition and smaller too. So if you didn't have room or you didn't have the budget, again, these books were all available in paperback. So, there we are. The Boston Cooking School Cookbook, also known lovingly as the Fanny Farmer Cookbook. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. 
uh, on our cookbook series. We're going to keep them coming, and a lot of you have suggested other cookbooks. And I've got my whole library here, and we will get to some other ones. I'm looking at ones that I'm planning on doing. Uh, I see the Good Housekeeping Cookbook. We're going to do that. The American Woman's Cookbook, we're going to do that. Um, McCall's Red Book, uh, the Farm Journal Cookbook Series. Uh, there's just, there's no end to the cookbooks here. And um, uh, it's great fun. And frankly, going through these cookbooks give me a lot of great ideas uh, as well of things that I want to make. Uh, at home and on Cavalcade of Food in future episodes. So anyways, I all that to say thank you for spending this time with me as we looked at the Fanny Farmer cookbook. The website is cavalcadeoffood.com uh, if you want to go there and it'll connect you to the episodes and other things that I do and I just want to say thank you we're in a new year, so I hope 2024 is healthy and happy, joyful and peaceful for all of us. Uh, and I appreciate you all watching. Please subscribe uh, if you are so inclined. Uh, you'll get notified when I've got new videos coming up and things like that. And the subscriptions actually help me very much. So I appreciate those who have subscribed. And if you haven't, please do so. Until the next time, stay well. And I'll look forward to seeing you again right back here on Cavalcade of Food. Bye, everybody.